Well, today is the second air quality index action day that has been declared for southeast Michigan and other areas so far this year. The first was during that unusually warm span back in mid-April. And most years we don't have our first air quality alert until June. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with an explanation why these are important to pay attention to, especially if you have lung problems. Absolutely, Kim and Karen. You know, the alerts or action day advisors are actually issued by Michigan Eagle. That's E-G-L-E. And they're based on a fairly complex analysis and the, of the amount of sunlight that we're receiving, wind, temperature, rain, and the presence of chemical contributors to ozone development, specifically volatile organic compounds like gasoline and engine emissions, as well as nitrogen oxides. Ozone is one of several elements of air pollution that contribute to the air quality index. There are actually five things. Dr. Daniel Ouellette is the department head for pulmonary and critical care medicine at Henry Ford Health. While ozone is the most important, other contaminant concerns in the air quality index include particulate matters, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. But ozone is a chemical that's in the air. It's a form of oxygen, and it is created in the air as a result of the effects of sunlight on pollutants such as fumes from automobiles or industrial uh, production of, of different kinds of gases and fumes. On air quality action days, people with lung problems should ideally stay in an air conditioned environment and avoid strenuous activity outside. Higher risk individuals include elderly patients with chronic respiratory problems, plus those patients who are younger and who have asthma also are at risk for asthma exacerbations when they're exposed to these things. Even young children who have asthma may need to stay in, inside. Dr. Ouellette also points out poor air quality has an even larger effect. You know, it's very interesting. It's not just the lungs. We see increased risk of heart attacks in, in cities that have um, increased problems. Now, while some of the problems actually come from industrial activities, everyone can help reduce the problem by doing some simple things. Try not to use gas powered equipment, reduce driving and avoid filling gas tanks because the fumes from evaporating gasoline actually contribute to ozone production. And here's one more fun fact. Cutting your lawn actually increases ozone in two ways. The emissions from your lawnmower and the release of volatile organic chemicals from the grass. Huh. That is known to you as that fresh cut grass smell. Those are the volatile organic that. chemicals coming off. Oh, this is so scientific. So yeah. when you talk about ozone being dangerous for people with lung problems, is that the same ozone that is in the ozone layer of the atmosphere? Are those two the same? Chemically, it is actually exactly the same ozone, in fact. But the more important thing is the ozone in the upper atmosphere is essential to us to filter out ultraviolet radiation. It's the ground level ozone that's really a health issue. Ozone is good when it's in the stratosphere, 12 and high, 12 miles and up and higher, but it's bad when it's right in our faces at ground level. Really, really interesting. Yeah. Yes. Okay.